Hello guys, before I get a bit emotional about everything going on at the moment and uh, I just want to say to the men, it doesn't matter whether you're in Russia, doesn't matter if you're in Ukraine, doesn't matter if you're in any of the countries right now. As an ex-army wife, I know what it's like standing at Bryce Norton Airport as your husband goes off in a plane and says bye to you and your children and are going off to peacekeep to cook, to um, medically help prepare people. And I know that feeling of standing at Bryce Norton, but knowing my husband was coming back because it was a tour. They were going on tour. They were going on, us army wives used to know as three month and six month tours. James, went out to Omar when I was married to him and Graham went out to Northern Ireland. Obviously I lived with him in Northern Ireland. We traveled as a family. We weren't allowed to be with him if we weren't married. So our wedding was pushed a year ahead. So me and Liam, sorry, signal. I've obviously watched the video of the father saying bye to his wife and children as he, as an over 18 year old male, is forced to stay in Ukraine. Those mothers will be what you all can then class as immigrants. Here in Portsmouth, they're going to be taking in the Ukrainian mothers and children. I hear to your social services, you leave these mothers alone. I hear to you, social services, you leave these mothers alone. And to all the people out there that want to call them, and it doesn't matter if it's the Russian mothers with their children. It doesn't matter if it's the Ukrainian mothers with their children. It doesn't matter if it's Kosovo. It doesn't matter. These are families. No man should have to leave his family to have to go and fight for the greed, the power driven, and also because of the incompetent snowflakes. I have to say, I understand where Putin is coming from. I have to say that I understand that Putin isn't out to wipe out Ukraine. Ukraine have taken independence and he said yes, and people aren't allowing for Ukraine to be independent. And NATO is pushing in and pushing in. And Putin is actually standing up for Russia because actually people don't want to be part of NATO. Not everybody wants to be pushed and badgered into their country being part of NATO. Not every country wants to be forced to live where they have to say, that the all over 18 men are forced to go and die on the front line for people that they don't even know what these people's ethical standing is. They don't even know what these people's mission statement is. They don't even know what these people's integrity is. And this is why I've had enough of everything that's going on and why as an individual family, one, one, if this all shit it's kicks the fan and England goes in, yeah, me, Elijah and Shiloh will not be leaving Dean. Wherever Dean is forced to go as a male over 18, me and the family will be going. Okay. And that also includes, um, and what the reason that I made my decision to stay here in the UK when lockdown happened, because Elijah, Shiloh, Aaron, Faith, Liam and Daniel are here. Now, my mother is over in Singapore. My father is here. So as a warrior of my, of, of my family, as the mother of my family, we should be sticking together as families. That's what I'm saying. We as individuals should be sticking together as families. We shouldn't be looking to any form of leader, any form of prime minister, any form of government, any form of thing. We should be looking to the Lord himself. We should be looking to the Lord himself. There is no man who can lead us through any of this. 
There is two paths before us all right now. And there is. And we have enough of everything. We do. There is enough cash money in circulation to be equally dis distributed between every single one of us that's already printed in the ether as it exists now. So every single one of us could live off a, a decent exchange of money for time of service. I think people are forgetting that one day these 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old people eventually become people who are dependent on someone else from the cradle to the grave. However healthy we are depends on the nutrients of the food around us. It depends on how it's farmed, how it's grazed. We're not living like this. We're living in a superstitious, man-made, cultured, food world thing that is poisoning us as people. We've got so much sickness, so much ill health, so much disease, so many problems because we're not living true in line. And I think it does need to come to this point. And it does. It needs to come to a point now where people on the BBC are crying because people don't want this. We can't see. Do you want to see how lovely it is in my world right now? Do you want to see if I completely just switch the fucking internet off? If I just woke up tomorrow and said, I am turning my phone off. I don't want to see any articles in the news. I don't want anything in my feeds that's going to show me anything more than snowboarding, sailing, climbing mountains, swimming in the ocean, swimming in the sea. Do you want to see how beautiful it is while the ship is going off right now? As you know, I'm not down at the docks, but obviously it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So obviously HMS Diamond has gone off. This is how beautiful this world is right now. This is how peaceful my world is. So if I was to turn off social media, not read one damn article, okay, I know that HMS Diamond has just left Great Britain. So, and the thing is, you can't sneak a ship out these days, can you? Because we've got things like cameras, we've got the press down there, we've got social media, so it's all shared out. Do people even understand what that has just done to Portsmouth Navy Base that have got to get a ship that they know? There's satellites, there's um, cameras, there's uh, even in the sea. There are crossings that you can't even go in because we've got submarines deep in the immersion of the sea. No actual private boat can seat in the sea over areas where we've got submarines in the sea. Do you even know that when you're holiday makers and you're splashing around and you're, oh, I do like to be beside the seaside, while you're doing that, there's submarines in the water, there's Navy ships going out. We have these things called Navy and it's that fragmented, yeah? Elijah said something to me this morning. He said, Mum, he said, if I was a soldier, why can't I fly a plane, steer a boat and drive a submarine and a tank? And I said, because love, you're either Army, Navy, Air Force or a Marine. And it's fragmented like that. And each individual person is trained differently. So basically, you've got these 17, 18 year olds that are leaving school, that are going into the army. Do you know why they're going into the army? Because they think they're getting to travel. Woo -woo! Get to travel the world. But don't worry, you're not going to fight. Don't worry, you're not going to kill anyone. Don't worry, there's no consequences of your actions. None. You can walk around this entire planet and have no consequences of actions whatsoever. You're free to do whatever you want. You're free to go and bomb whoever you want. You're free to maim whoever you want. You can rape whoever you want. You can force whoever you want to do whatever it is that you want to do. Because we've got no boundaries in this world. We have no proper thing that says... We are all free to travel and experience this world in any way, shape or form. Please pick your litter up. But please do remember that the local council has to pay the binmen to come and get it. And you're not actually really able to actually recycle all of that stuff in your property. So it's pointless you taking it home. It's got to go somewhere. 
So we've got people that get up in the morning to collect the rubbish of all of the things that we do. I am literally sitting here now, you know, it's not great. It's an egg box in there, yeah? Cardboard, plastic, rubbish. We can't even separate it here. We can't even, unless we're going over and you're going to go over to Asda and you're going to separate it all, which I'm going to be doing with some of it and I've got to get better at this myself. I would like to live in a house where you've got your garbage facilities and you put your bins up, but you're still, again, relying on someone to come and pick them bins up. Hey, Jim, do you mind coming and grabbing my bins? No, I'm not going to pay you, love. No, sorry. Why have I got to pay you to come pick my bins up? Well, can't you just pick my bins up? Can't you just throw it in the back of your car and, and, and drive it up there for me? Well, no, love, not really. Got better things to do. So we have to have some form of infrastructures that work in all of the cities, towns, if that's what you want to call them, countries, however you want to divide it, from our houses to the door that we go out. So literally, the moment I go out of this door, and this door here, and then we've got a duty and a responsibility out there, yeah? Okay, before you judge my house, I'm far from living somewhere that I designed myself or decided to be myself. This is just part of my journey. But what I'm basically saying is, again, I'm what even Anonymous is jumping on Puntin, okay? Puntin isn't the one starting the war. <laughs> He's not. And if you really, really, really educate yourself rather than looking at all of the... And I'm far from educated on this to the level that I would love to be right now. Damn, I can't even talk more than one language. And if it wasn't for the fact that I can watch TikTok in translation or I can go onto social media and translate it, what I'm saying is I've got Ukrainian friends here and I've got Russian friends here. So I'm not alienating any single person, okay? And Portsmouth are going to be part of a massive big problem. You're going over to Ukraine, mate, and you're leaving the fathers there and you're bringing the mothers and the children over here. So I'm saying to us British women, to us British women, we've got to come together for these women because we know what happens when these women get here. We know what happens. The mothers will be separated out onto the streets and the children will be taken into foster care. No, 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 this cannot happen. This cannot happen. The fact that they have separated the fathers, I think it should be better that if fathers wanted to leave Ukraine, if families wanted to leave. And the challenge is I don't think there's many people in this world who have ever had to walk out of their front doors, leave their personal possessions behind and grab everything. But you can't even take your toothbrush, really. And I don't think there's any people that have ever had to go through this. I don't think there's many people that understand the amount of people here in Great Britain right now that are facing evictions from their properties. Uh, hey there, Katrina. Hey, Kelly. Um... I'm having a rant because obviously I've watched a father have to say bye to his children and wife who would then be brought here. Yeah, Portsmouth is going to be the, um, the place that's going to be rescuing the Ukrainian mothers and children. And some of them won't even be able to take their grandparents. In Ukraine, as it stands at the moment... They are saying, if you are a male and you are over 18, you cannot leave Ukraine. Yeah, you cannot leave Ukraine. So these men, yeah, are then forced to put their children and their, mother, their wives on a bus. And then women and them children are now on their own without their husbands. Do you know that I find it very much easier being out there with Dean? People might find Dean very, 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 very hard. Dean's a very peaceful man. He's a very, 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 very quiet, peaceful man. And he likes a lot of peace, yeah? However, <laughs> however, if all of a sudden we got told that actually Britain don't want to be part of NATO, so all of a sudden our Houses of Commons and our Houses of Lords stand up and say no. 
We're not part of NATO. We respect to keep the peace in the North. However, we're not paying a membership. It's like a golf club membership. Yeah, that's what membership is. You are paying into a club. So if I go to the gym and I get a membership, I signed a disclosure yesterday because I've actually made the decision to go back onto PIP. I'm sick and tired of not ticking the box for that country for people to leave me alone to deal with me and my family because of the condition that we've got. Am I going to face the persecution of people if I flip over to a motability car? Of course I am. Because that's how ignorant people are. People don't have lives and this is the problem. Like I said, I can go out here right now. There is a Navy ship currently going off to evacuate all of the families and bring them here to Portsmouth. HMS Diamond, yeah? And they've got loads of ships, loads of rescue stuff, loads of planes, all of this stuff. You see how beautiful it is. It's how beautiful it is. Did you see the hail yesterday? Do you see that hail that come down yesterday? It lasted for as long as that live did. So anyway, HMS Diamond is now ready to leave Portsmouth. It left about 52 minutes ago. Probably not that long ago, about half an hour ago, about now. In the last hour. So HMS NATO is now going up past Portsmouth, heading up, and it will go out into the main sea. Russia has now said that no UK uh, people can enter into Russia, right? It doesn't matter whether this is a war between South and England. Let's do it, guys. Okay. I'm a southerner. I'm down south, mate. You fucking northerners up there. You're a bunch of fucking cunts. I lived up there fucking 13 years and what a bunch of miserable wankers you are. So I've come back down to the south, darling, where everyone's a bunch of fucking wankers. Yeah? So let's have a north and south divide like we've always had. Okay? So where do we put this line between who's a southerner and who's a northerner? Don't forget the east and the, and, and the west. And actually, if we want to have a fight between you, so let's think football hooligans right now. All right? All the football hooligans out on the fucking streets, yeah? And actually, let's not have the mothers and women, yeah? Let's back the mothers and women out there because they've now got defend themselves, love. Because these soldiers rape women, by the way, and we know Portsmouth people. We know the Portsmouth soldiers rape mothers, don't we, Portsmouth? Yes, we know that your soldiers are on um, swingers' sites and things like that. We know that you soldiers are raping our homeless out here. We know you're doing it in seven, eights and nines, mate. Fact. Fact. I can even tell you. I even know the mother that came to me after going on to a swingers' site and turning up and being raped by seven, nine in the room, but raped by seven soldiers. I've seen the police paperwork as they've treated her as nothing more than a smacker and a cracker and a mother who's had her children taken. So these vulnerable mothers have now got to see it with people that they are now not their husbands. And I just think it's creating one massive big, big mess that if you just let fucking Russia go in there, stop these animal gorilla people that are keeping the Ukrainian people fucking trapped, take him out, do what he's got to do and actually support him and around applause them, we might be able to get on to being actual independent states, telling Davos to fuck off, telling NATO to fuck off and telling every single person, United Nations, One World Order, the, the whatever frames that we are individual people and we have our rights to choose to be here on this planet free reigning as we are and yes if we have a car crash we do need these infrastructures that means that we've got a telephone number that we can ring over here in great britain it's called 999 yeah over in america it's called 911 i don't know what it is in any other country I fuck knows, hence why I don't travel as much as I do, because I'm not quite sure of how the rules are in their world. We, over here in the UK, yeah, we used to have this thing. This is how history works, yeah? Our men, if I can, there. No, I can't get it out from, I'm getting it because it's fucking poignant. No, nope, it's completely jammed behind me back at bed. No, nope, I'm getting it. There we go. I got it. <laughs> Here in the UK, do you know why we drive on the left side of the road? We drive on the left side of the road. Devil run, devil run, devil run. Right, we used to drive. Sorry, I got cut out again. We used to drive on the right side of the road because we were right-handed and we used to... 
I'm going to give you a visual because it helps you. Let me get on me a little horse here in a minute. I've got me horse, literally. Mm. Got me horse. So anyway, we used to literally ride on horses and we used to kill. <laughs> Off with their heads. That's what they used to do. So that's why we drive on the right side of the road. Left side of the road, okay? Because here in Great Britain, we were predominantly right-handed and we fought with our right hand. So therefore, we used to be on horses and we used to kill with our right hand. So that's how we now drive. Over in other countries, it's not like that. What I'm saying is I don't think people realise there's one thing opening up your eyes and being aware of everything that's going on in the world. There is another thing allowing it to impact you in such a way that actually emotionally hurts you. Especially when the media are portraying something in such a way. So this is no different right now than the other website that attacks Kelly Cotton. And then other people go in, actually, I know where Kelly's coming from, okay? So they'll all get you to hate Puntin. Even Anonymous has gone on to Puntin. We shouldn't be fighting and joining and recruiting because we've got more freedom here in the UK. But I tell you what, if the shit hits the fan, they will be ringing my ex-husbands and they will be recalling them to duty. And in this country, they won't have a choice. That's why I quite like having the diagnosis of EDS and keeping my family slightly safe because we can't be recruited. We can't be forced to fight. My children can't be forced to be trained to be soldiers, police officers, nurses, because they tick the box. Disability, learning challenge. So us, we just get dumped on the sites and we get put in council houses and, um, you know, we can just get on in the perimeters of the life that we're allowed to live. Our children going to school, blah, 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 TV controlled. Not going to get into that. But I've got children, by the way. So if you look at my little timeline photograph, the first of my, my picture, that's my life as a single mother with my two boys. So that's me talking about... 2004 all the way through. So that's that 10 years. Then you've got the picture of Liam Daniel who are older teenagers and they've got younger brother and sister. So then I see the world through that. I get to see the cartoons again. I get to say, oh, Liam and Daniel used to watch this. You know, you say, oh, I used to watch this. And your nan and the mum used to say, yeah, well, I used to watch this. Programming, television. All of this stuff that's going on around us that's manipulating us. And all I just want people to do, because it hurts me so much when I see old people walking down the road huddled up together with masks on their face. It hurts me when I listen that America are doing everything they can to keep the children in masks. But it love it when I'm walking down the street here and I'm seeing people in normal life. In normal life. There is, they, haven't, they haven't conformed to it. They haven't... They haven't let the media and the controls of the people that are keeping you poor. They haven't allowed for the great reset and the manipulation around us to take away us going down to the sea. I hear children as I'm walking past talking post lockdown like it was history. My dad used to let me out during lockdown. Oh no, my mum didn't let me out during lockdown. And I don't think people realise why they're being quite lenient with you and distracting you, that there's so much more going on right now. There's so much more going on right now. This is about people fighting over whether their country wants independence from the one world order. You've got to remember, Russia took in Snowden. That's how bad the war between America and Russia is. Why did Putin protect Snowden? 
And if you don't know who Snowden is, then you need to go back to 2013 when lots of people all just had a fuck enough of everything going on from the surveillance that was going on to the manipulation and control. Snowden is one of the biggest ones and he was protected by Russia. Russia will never allow for the one world order to penetrate their country. And that's why Putin is the longest standing probable at the moment. Us here, Boris won't probably see this through. Boris wouldn't have that balls. If all of a sudden somebody decided that UK was getting too out of its lane and the people of the UK were starting to get back into the seasons, loving the winter. People were literally putting up the winter curtains and the big thick curtains for the winter. And, you know, maybe even here we put shutters on our windows as well, just in case, you know, because there can be quite a few little bit of storms and we're not really prepared for it. And we don't think about going down to the garage and getting all the stuff ready and prepared because we weren't trained to be like that. We haven't been educated in the seasons in such a way that we should do, other than football season. Hey, let's pull fun to football off of off of them. Fantastic. Let's get rid of people being paid hundred figures numbers anyway to manipulate and control people while you all watch someone throwing a ball around while they're ripping and straping all of the homeless out and killing them to build the arenas. You know, I just think that people think they're so damn powerless to everything that's going on. And we're not. And that's why when these mothers step into the UK, I'm going to be here in Portsmouth. I'm going to be here the day that these mothers and these children are brought in. And I hope that I've got shitloads of other mothers ready to greet them. So we can bring them into a community and we can help them with social housing properly so they don't sign Section 20s. And we tell them, you don't sign a section 20 and hand your children over to social care while they put you in a hostel and help you so-called helping you because you'll find yourself in a 26-week court process and your children will be gone. We're not going to have this here in the UK now, are we? So the people that have already been through it, we know what goes on. And to all the foreign families that have already come to the UK and understand that this goes on, it's time for us to protect the people who have just lost their houses, who have just kissed their husbands goodbye, who have just probably left their fathers and have come over to Great Britain here in Portsmouth, where people will look at them as immigrants. And they're not immigrants. But what I'm saying is, is when these people get off, I don't care whether they're a Russian family. I don't care whether they're a Ukrainian family. I treat both exactly the same. They're not a threat to me. They never were a threat to me. And they're not a problem to me. I can go onto my phone now and I can ring one of the mothers here and say, hey, do you want to meet up at the park? She is Ukrainian. I can go down to the skate park and say, hey, are we going skating? And the person who will be leading me is Russian. Now, I think the UK need to be going over to frickin' Ukraine and telling them we ain't leaving their husbands. And that's the British UK I want. That's the Boris Johnson I want. The Boris Johnson that says, no, we're not going to traffic your wife and your children and fob them off into adoption and probably rape and pillage and abuse your, 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 your wife and your children are safe because our army is here saying, no, you're not keeping the men, mate. And actually, these wives and these children don't even have to leave their country, mate. We're going to get the person out that isn't allowing for Ukraine to be independent. And we're actually going to listen to what actually, because we don't want to get involved in the NATO and Russia war now, do we? NATO, NATO, NATO. This is what it's about. NATO. Do you want to be part of the one world order? Yes or no? If yes, get over here. We won't kill you. If no, fuck off over there. Are you going to get vaccinated? Yes, join NATO. Not vaccinated. Get ready for unvaccinated camps. Or do you want to do something about it now? And it's not about marching the streets. It's not about all of this. It's about true compassion and kindness. It's about when these mothers and these children come on, that we, the British people, say, no, 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 no. These camps that you've already built for them, no. 
You've already built the damn camps for these people. You've already built it. So no, what people should be saying is actually, love, us men, we're sick and tired of picking up for a measly what? How much did my ex-husband get? We were on an income of what? I uh, started off as a private, Graham went as a, um, a, a, a corporal. What? 19 grand a year at the beginning, up to maybe 32. 32 grand a year. Is 32 grand a year really worth sacrificing your true wife's relationship with your wife, yeah? Because you've got to go to work, mate. You've got to put the job first. You've got to put the army first. Because, hey, reign to the, chill, the, to the queen. Well, I'm sorry, queenie, queenie. You really need to get your fucking shit together and decide out your family who's taking over from you because you're too damn scared to walk the streets on your own, let alone know what to do in a situation like this. Boris Johnson's not got it in it. Do you know the sort of person you want right now is a man like Dean? Because Dean is a man who will pick up a fucking sword, mate, and he'll go at you. Yeah, you want to fight? You want to come at me? You want to fucking kill me, mate? Dean's ready, Yeah. Because he's the sort of person that isn't interested in all the patheticness going on. If someone steps to him, he assumes they're stepping into a killing mate. That's why no point sending investigators around Dean. Because Dean will tell you. He will tell you his law. Dean said something really powerful to me the other day. Yesterday, actually. And it really hit me. He said, why should I give up my rights for people who ain't educated in theirs? So when someone's coming over to him, why should Dean have to have the violation that is going on just because the person doesn't understand that they're invading his space? So at the end of the day, if Dean's going to be in a nice... And I, I, do you know what? I watched an amazing, wonderful video of him out yesterday and um, Shiloh had all the pigeons sitting on him and all the pigeons and he's telling him, stay calm, stay calm. We had a situation at the beach the other day where Dean actually had Eleanor, I was back, and all of a sudden I was the one that saw the dog shot shoot over. All right, it wasn't the greatest scene to watch, but Eleanor let her know. No, you don't, yeah? We had to let the other owners know, you don't let your dog come over, and it was done. And all Dean kept saying is, stay calm. Just stay calm. The moment you get stressed, Kelly, you make the situation worse. Just stay calm. <coughs> You're asking for women and children to now stay calm in the protection of army that they don't even know these people. And then you're asking people to respond, come over here and sit in paperwork. And with this going on, you're now going to have more problems going on with our own social care. So I would say to people, if you're a private landlord over here, you know, what a fucking mess, eh? Oh, why didn't you just all listen to a woman back in 2010 who was trying to explain to you that there was a bunch of fucking psychopathic narcs, mate, that wanted to, like, become pinkies in the brains and they were going to go ahead and do all of this. And um, just because I was a mother on benefits and people want to go, oh, she thinks she's friends with Donald Trump and she thinks she's friends with uh, Richard Branson. Why didn't you just understand there's 5,000 people in a fucking room and there was a mother stood at the back with her kids? who didn't even have a ticket. Do you know how much these tickets are to get into these events? Anyway, all I'm saying is, because I've got Stephen Morgan saying Portsmouth support Ukraine, yeah, and apparently because Stephen Morgan says Portsmouth supports Ukraine and Portsmouth is going to rape and pillage and take in all of the white, the women and the things and abandon the men over there, that me as a Portsmouth person has got to agree because Stephen Morgan says that's what we're going to do. Well, Stephen Morgan is just a shadow minister for the education department and he's not actually part of who is actually in parliament. We're actually under Conservative government. So why all of a sudden has Labour got all of the people and we, we as the people are meant to now be horrible to Russians? Mm, OK, so when I go down to the skating and I see my Russian friend who I go to, yeah? So the moment we see each other, we go... Yeah? So instead, I'm meant to turn around and go, You Russian fucking cunt! Am I? No. It's not going to force me to do that. You're not going to make me hate people just because the media says we should hate them. You're not going to make me 
you're not going to make me you're not going to make me turn on a bunch of mothers because Britain wants to call them immigrants and tell them to go and drown at sea. So these mothers have now got to come to the UK. OK, so what? So you think that they're going to find the social housing? What, when you've watched what I've gone through for social housing in Portsmouth, you think they're going to house all these mothers and these children? Really? They're going to be divided around these countries, children are going to be in foster care, and it's not going to be long until we see these mothers on, on the streets. Prostituted, cracked, drugged. And do you know what they'll do with them? They'll put them in carers' jobs if they do help them. If they do, that's what they'll be offered. You're going to be a carer and your child go to school and you'll get a social housing here. But they've got to live over here not knowing whether their husbands are alive or not. So sorry, Boris Johnson, you are an absolute pussy, mate. You are a pussy. A real fucking leader, mate, would stand over there with all of it and go, look, he's got the balls, mate, to go in there to fucking horrible, ranting, rile people, yeah? Because it is going on around the world. It's horrible what's going on around the world. It's dirty, it's degrading and it's vile. And it's about time it all got fucking cleaned up so we're all safe to have a nice passport and we can all go ever wherever we like. And if you want to fly a plane, you can. If you want to ride a bike, boat, you can. If you want to drive a car, you can. I've got a man here that I've got to push for his fucking driving tests now. Like I said, Dean woke up as a 17-year-old on Reclaim the Streets, 1994, Reclaim the Streets. That was about not putting cars on the road. Too many cars, too much pollution. Yeah, back in 1994, they were talking about pollution and cars. So at the end of the day, all I'm saying is, is Boris Johnson, our Queen, the media, the Daily Mail, the Independent, all of these people, and I've told you how it works. I've shown you the original article that was done and the only reason that Chris allowed it to happen was because I had agreed to print exactly what I got as on benefits, right? They weren't interested in Challenge Britain. In fact, they were interested in stopping it, right? The Daily Mail never interviewed me. Didn't interview me. They wrote an article about me. They didn't interview me. They didn't have permission to do so. I was on daybreak that day, yeah? So they t went to my house Whatever. So I'm showing you that what it represents. So even me being emotionally pulled by this father who was putting his wife on the thing, we don't even know what level this is true. It's no different than my auntie crying her eyes over Corey Coughlin being dead. Well, he wasn't dead. It was a fucking media thing and she reacted to it emotionally. So yes, I have reacted to it emotionally because between me and Dean, I did want to take the boys down to the ship because Elijah obviously does what he does and he's into what he's in. Dean was like, what, you want to go and watch a ship that's going to be going and mutilating people? So it was a difficult one and I didn't go down, but I have posted it up because I'm trying to show you it's real. That at the end of the day here in Portsmouth... Right now, it's absolutely beautiful. I could be down at the beach with my sea, feet, feet in the sea. I'm trying to move by April. I want to be out of here by the end of the March. I don't want to be paying my council tax. I don't know if I'm staying in Portsmouth to keep the address, which I think is probably a really good idea. Um, but ideally, I need to be getting back to my life, and that is seasonal. Um, no, I'm not vaccinated. I haven't had one test done. Not one in the whole time it's done. Nobody's put anything up my nose. Nobody's make, got my saliva. Nobody's got my DNA. I've managed to go this whole time without one test. Um, I've worn a visor at A&E. Uh, if I'm not well, that's a bit different. If I've got a cough and a cold, I don't go out anyway. I always self-isolate. <laughs> I've been doing that common sense shit for a long time, you know, washing my hands and thinking about viruses that we have on our toilet seat. And, you know, if we go into a public toilet, you know, and wash your hands and stuff, you know, that, that, that my nan and mum taught me that. Um, my, you know, it's like not spitting on the floor, isn't it? You're either taught these things or you're not, or you see people doing stuff that you don't like that makes you go, yeah, you don't want to be like that. But we don't really have any proper mo role models. So anyway, all I want to say is to any person in the country, in the UK here right now, please don't call them immigrants. These people have had to be forced to, and people, women, yeah, mothers, have been forced to leave their partners 
because of something that may or may not happen. I can tell you now, Putin isn't out there to kill all the Ukrainians. Putin's there to free them. And this is about stopping NATO, mate. This is about stopping the One World Order. So I will say it again. You're either part of the One World Order, which is like joining um, Hitler, or you're fighting for your freedom. And if you're standing for your freedom, then you are the persecuted. Simple as that. Think about it that way then, honey. Think about it like Jesus, yeah? Jesus persecuted and everything. Um, same sort of thing. So we are currently heading into what they want, sustainability by 202030, using, using uh, what's it called? The crisis, the weather crisis, global crisis or whatever it is. I can't even think about what it is right now. And to the trolls, mate, who took the piss out of me saying that the metaverse were going to be doing what they were doing and then putting it up on your website, you, one, you've proved you're a bunch of narcissists that are triangulating me and it won't work. Um, straight away, like I said, Hugh Hefner went straight into the metaphysics world. Strip joints. Children were being found by paedophile hunters in strip joints in the metaphysics world. So already... These people have already trolled saying, oh, she's this. But actually, by doing that live that I did, people went in. And sometimes it only takes one person to go in, go all the way through the medical physics, going, yes, I'm going to walk through the fucking lines then. What, this is a brothel? Yeah, I'm in. Right, what kid's here? You, 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 with me. You, with me. What, you going to shoot me? What, you going to do? Are you going to shoot me? Sorry, kids are coming with me. Yeah, and there's people in this world that are willing to do that. OK, some of them, unfortunately, have got to pick up guns and go through it and do that. But in the metaphysics world, it's a slightly bit different. But what we don't know is if you die in the metaphysics world, do you die in the reality? That they still don't know. So all I would just say is you don't know what somebody is going through. So if you can't help them, don't hinder them. Don't point fingers at people because when you point one finger at you, you point three back at yourself. Yeah? Backfires. So, the Ukrainian mothers and children are going to be brought to Portsmouth. And social services. I'm going to be here to make sure that they are kept together as families. And Boris Johnson, you're a wanker, mate. The fact that you've even allowed for this to happen, you're a cunt. You ain't no leader. To every other country that's allowed this to happen, this is not what Putin said. Putin was not interested in the families. You didn't need to fear the families to leave. Now, you're classed as human traffickers. You're not saving these people. You just put them into danger. And they don't want to be here. They want to be in their own countries, mate. They want to be in their own countries. They want to be with their families. People don't want to be separated. So why is it whenever there's a crisis, men that way, women that way, children that way? And I said this from day one. This system, when the shit goes down, it's drown the fucking fathers, leave the fucking mothers to fend for themselves, put the children on the beach for the pickings for the people that want them. No, 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 no. So if you find that you've got somebody in your area and they are what you all call immigrants, doesn't matter if they're Polish, Ukraine, from Egypt, from Asia, from India, from wherever doesn't matter what their colour is. It doesn't matter what their nationality is. You've got to remember every single one of us has been governed by prime ministers and presidents and leaders that are all fighting for things that we don't really need. We don't really need. And we can, as a, as a world... We don't need to be raping, pillaging and stripping people of their land 
to be able to go, look, we want full governance over this whole property and you're all going to rent from us and you're all going to have better lives for it and, and you're going to have more freedom and you're going to be working this way. And yes, some of it's great. We're not teaching people basic fundamentals. And now you're asking for women and children to be alone without their husbands. Well, I'm sorry. I go out and I do what I do as a woman. <coughs> But 100%. I've been to Egypt as a single mum, yeah? I won't go back there without a husband again. No way. No way. No way. No way. <coughs> I won't go over there with Aaron and Faithful, uh, Elijah and Shiloh on my own. So anyway, it's Faith's birthday tomorrow. <coughs> And I have to live in complete re residual, call it mental health, call it trauma, call it what you like. I call it abuse of my family being separated. Alienate the father, take the mother, fuck the mother over, take the children. And I've recently just posted up the video that TikTok had taken down. And it isn't about my personal address because they've left all the other ones up there. The videos that they took down was the one where I then proved that all that changed the moment I was handed a social services card after my children were taken with a telephone number on it saying, ring this number between these hours. <laughs> and you people can't see this as kidnap. If I'd been a mother who'd done something wrong, mate, I'd be living a very different life now, but I'm still here. And I'm still going on. Yes, global warming, that's what I was trying to say. It's called them playing around with the weather manipulation, trying to get you all to plummet lots of money. Have you seen how much Bitcoin has been sent over to Ukraine right now? You're being manipulated, people. You're being manipulated.